to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Everything destined for you to enter into, whatever is elongating it in your life, I stand by the God of heaven. It dies this night in the name of Jesus. finally in the name of Jesus whatever has wasted your time and wasted your life please believe let's not be careless let's receive with all our hearts I come in the name of Jesus the son of the living God and I prophesy speed to your life the kind of speed that God will take years and put in one week may that kind of speed rest upon you One more prayer anyone standing as a hindrance to what prophecy has declared over your life in the name of Jesus Christ any structure any system fighting the purposes of God in your life on this 20th day I declare the same way Jericho came down it comes down this night in the name of Jesus I say it again, it comes down this night in the name of Jesus. Please open your mouth in one minute and cry to God. Visit me, oh God. Visit my children. Visit my family. If someone pray, please pray from the depth of your heart. visit me tonight my life will never remain the same i insist i declare i insist somebody is praying i insist i declare in the name of jesus the son of the living god hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord we're going to sit down shortly, but you see, when Moses was negotiating the exodus of the nation of Israel, a time came when Pharaoh said, let your men go, but leave the children and the cattle behind. And Moses said, no way. The command is that we all go. You are going to pray. Lord, I will not only move forward alone. I'm bringing my children along. I'm bringing everything that belongs to me. Is someone praying? Please lift your voice and pray. It says, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house. As for me and my house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point and then we'll sit down. Father, the fire 
that will light my life again. The kind of fire that will rest upon me again. To see your salvation, to see your power. I open up my spirit tonight. Lift your voice and pray. time we have to share truth tonight open our eyes restore our fire challenge our hearts scatter the obstacles that stand before us and let our lives bring glory to your name in Jesus name I pray amen pastor thank you I'm honored to be here thank you ma thank you so so much hallelujah praise the lord jeremiah chapter 33 i'll be teaching tonight very briefly and then we'll pray i hope you don't mind that we pray tonight in the name of jesus we will pray jeremiah 33 and verse 3 i just want to share a little on prayer it's a moment all across the body of christ believers are fasting praying it's a time of renewal it's a time to challenge our spirits the bible says call unto me and i will answer thee it says i will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not so god allows men to call unto him as mighty as god is as mysterious as he is he grants permission that men can call unto him and he leaves the men who call unto him an assurance that he answers call unto me and i will answer you psalm 55 and verse 2 psalm 55 and verse 2 psalm 65 did i say 55 i apologize 65 65 psalm 65 and verse 2 it says O thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come O thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come the Bible says let me just do a little background quickly the Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God kings and priests kings and priests now believers are called many things in scripture believers are called light believers are called salt believers are called ambassadors believers are called sons uh, there are several names that the bible calls believers now in revelation chapter 5 the bible says we are not only light and salt we are not only joint heirs now when he speaks in terms of our function he says we are priests and kings kings and priests are we together now and the priestly ministry of the believer is a dimension that very few believers understand the bible not only says we are king 21 and verse 13 jesus himself when he flogged the people who he came into the temple the bible says and he found people making merchandise out of the house of god and he made a whip and flogged all of them out and you know in his zeal he made a statement that it is written my house that includes new heritage baptist church 
shall be called the house of prayer please someone say the house of prayer i know when we say prayer house now most times we think of it in you know there are different things called prayer house but the bible says that my house will not only be a place of fellowship it will not only be a place of teaching it will not only be a place of brotherhood but the house of prayer the house of prayer praise the lord it is important for us to understand that prayer is not an option for the believer prayer is not a system we use to manage emergencies prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is not for pastors prayer is not for those in ministry prayer is for men luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray 18 he spake a parable unto them to this end that men 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 once you are a man it is mandatory that you pray the side effect for ignoring your priestly ministry is that you will faint he spake a parable an illustration to the end that men that means once you find yourself a man you must pray hallelujah you must pray and very quickly before we pray i just want to walk us through a few reasons why the bible mandates you see every time the lord says to do something it is always for the advantage of the saints and faith is based on understanding it's not just based on obedience it is difficult to obey what you do not understand i give you an instance if i ask this my dear brother to stand here remain here indefinitely chances are that this man will be wary because he does not understand why i asked him to stand but if i tell him stand here because there are terrorists outside even when he's tired that revelation sponsors stability so it's not enough to just believe randomly we must understand that everything god tells the saints the interest of the saints is behind that instruction so when the bible says men should pray it is not only important to believe because god said but we must explore through the lens of the word why the saints must pray thank you sir are we together very quickly let me give us five or six reasons and then we'll pray i want us to spend time praying not just to talk about it why should the saints pray why should i pray why should a mother pray why should a father pray why should a young man pray why should a student pray why should a millionaire pray why should a successful person pray number one it is a command luke chapter 18 and verse 1 we just read it in addition to that you can add first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible says pray without season it's not a memory verse it's a strong advice pray without season it doesn't mean pray from morning till night it means be consistent in your prayer life are we together pray without season pray without season do not allow seasons and moments in your life come that is not covered by prayer pray without season the second reason why the bible mandates that we pray is that it is one of the strategies for fellowship fellowship apostle paul was teaching the church in corinth and he said the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowships the word koinonia the fellowship of the spirit that it remains with you fellowship it is important that we grow in intimacy with the holy spirit and intimacy is sponsored through fellowship are we together first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 paul is speaking here and he's speaking in the context of praying in other tongues but then it generally is prayer for he that speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh not unto men but unto god for no man understandeth him how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries are we together fellowship fellowship most people do not grow in the knowledge of god because we lack the time to spend 
in fellowship lord i want to know you and you are praying reveal yourself to me it was the psalmist that said in psalm 63 i believe oh god you are my god it says early will i seek you my soul longs for you my my um it says my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is verse 2 says to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary lord i desire to know you i desire to know your ways because you see when you know a man is sponsor stability it is not enough to know the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob the god of your pastor you must know your god for daniel 11 and verse 32 the b part says but the people that do know their god you can know another man's god that is another man's covenant with god but you must know your god that when the vicissitudes of life stand before you you know there is something you know about your god but i know whom i have believed that's what the apostle said and i am persuaded it's not only that i have believed i know whom i have believed hallelujah we must know god in fact scripture puts it like this prophet jeremiah was teaching and he said let not the wise man glory in his wisdom he said let not the rich man glory in his riches are we together now let not the strong man glory in his strength he says but let him that glory had glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me the real pride the wealth of the believer is not just real estate the wealth of the believer is not just investments around the wealth of the believer is not just accolades and achievements are we together the bible says the real wealth the real pride of a believer should be that he knows god to know god to know god john chapter 17 and verse 3 jesus himself was praying and he lifted up his voice and he said this is eternal life please look up that they may know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent that means eternal life is not just the life of god that is received it's a journey an unending exploration of the person of the christ is eternal life so we must progress in our knowledge of god let me tell you this there are certain things when you know about god fear dies there are certain things when you know about god uncertainties die the world that we live in today require not just knowing government not just knowing police not just knowing lawyers you must know god if you know all of these people and as strong as these systems of influence are if you do not know god you will fall by the wayside but the people that do know their god somebody say lord reveal yourself to me please say one more time mean it say lord reveal yourself to me you can know another man's god you can know your mother's god you can know your father's god but a time can come you can say i know whom i have believed fellowship to spend time through prayer to know god when you spend time in prayer he will reveal himself to you let me show you something a very interesting scripture john chapter 14 and verse 12 never forget this scripture the lord showed me this scripture many many years as ago as i cried and said lord reveal yourself to me and he showed me this john chapter ah uh, oh dear did i get it right i'm still looking for the scripture please help me find it he that keepeth my commands he it is that loves me and i shall love him and my father will love him and we will manifest ourselves to him john i know it's verse 12. please look at it for me thank you 14 21. it says he it is that loves me and he that loves me shall be loved of my father i will love him and then do what first myself there are people that God reveals himself to. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Lord, I am tired of knowing government alone. I'm tired of knowing one uncle alone. 
reveal yourself moses said show me your glory this is a cry that our generation no longer has we are interested in show me your power we're interested in give me money which is not wrong we're interested in give me a job we're interested in fight my enemies but it is a noble prayer to know god it is wealth when you know god can someone right where you are sitting in one minute say lord reveal yourself to me someone turn it into a prayer in one minute reveal yourself oh god is someone praying I want to know you I want to see your face I want to call you Lord I want to touch you I want to hear your voice I want to call you Lord Hallelujah Number three the third reason why the saints must pray please take note of it is that prayer is a platform for growth and transformation please write it down prayer is a platform for growth and transformation the bible shows us that when the saints pray they grow and can be transformed very powerful scripture that changed my life luke chapter 9 please we'll read verse 28 and 29 never forget this scripture for the rest of your life luke chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings he took peter and john and james and went into a mountain to pray 29 please let's read together one to read and as he prayed uh-huh the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening two things happen when you pray number one transformation the fashion of his countenance was altered number two his garment turned to become white when you pray transformation comes when you pray god will reveal things about your life that says change this drop this pick this your garment becomes white when you pray the bible says the count the fashion of his countenance remember the bible tells us paul speaking to the church in corinth he says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then he says but we all with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror we are changed transformed transformed prayer transforms you show me a weak man let that weak man or woman pray and you will watch another kind of man come out of that weakness show me people who can pray and i show you people who will remain strong and will stand the test of time a platform for growth and transformation first corinthians 14 4 we already read verse 2 first corinthians 14 verse 4 it says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself the word edify is an architectural term edifice the building of a superstructure a building when you lay the foundation you begin to put block upon block until it becomes a solid structure so the bible says that when you pray that transformation happens you are edified spiritually your knowledge of god is increased your stamina in the spirit is increased remember the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it says your strength is small are we together jude has only one chapter verse 20 jude 1 and then 20 it says but ye beloved building up your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost when you pray you build your faith what is your faith your capacity to believe god your capacity to take him as true there are things that god wants to deliver to us but there is a requisite faith level to be able to receive it 
and because of all the nonsense and the vicissitudes that that fill our world you switch on a television and there's unbelief you read the newspaper there's unbelief you are in your office unbelief everywhere you need to find a system to remedy for the constraints of society otherwise a time will come what you believed yesterday you will no longer believe again for instance most people believe by january that god is able god is a lifter god is a blesser by september october because of the noise that they've heard they no longer will be able to believe it again it was israel hilton that said away from the noise to meet with you away from all of the noise to hear your voice sometimes the voice of god is not in the earthquake sometimes the voice is not in all of the noise you will need to find a place where you will hear the still small voice the voice that changes you the voice that gives you strength are we still together so a platform for growth and transformation when you see that a believer remains in the same spot for a long time part of the diagnosis is that something is wrong with his prayer life something is wrong with her prayer life plus jesus minus satan is not prayer that is the language of lazy people who don't plan to go far are we together those things are cliches that the devil deceives us with we, we just justify ourselves you need to pray it takes time to pray prayer is more than a morning devotion prayer is more than a five minutes of holding hands touching and agreeing you will need to spend time to generate the energy that strengthens you paul was speaking to the church while he was mentoring them he said um that you'll be strengthened in the inner man strengthened in the inner man why because the vicissitudes of life will test your stamina it will take the strength in the inner man to remain one of our dear precious women back in the north lost her husband just a few days to christmas and I went to just um, communicate my condolence on behalf of myself and the ministry. And when I went to their house, I saw the woman. Very tragic event. But as I looked at that woman, I saw stamina. The rewards of spiritual investment. I could see her humanity attempting to grieve and cry. But the power that was resident in that woman would not allow her act like an unbeliever. Listen most times the way we fall by the wayside is proof we did not draw strength and you see when god is calling you to to pray it is because there is an evil day the bible says give a portion to seven year to eight because you do not know the evil that shall happen upon the earth there are times that you will need to draw from the residue of your spiritual investment in the place of prayer let me tell you you will not always have that time and that convenience to be able to pray and stretch so when god calls you to pray it's because he knows that the days of men are full of evil there will be times you will need to stand alone a day will come when people will antagonize you in the office and say because you are not my tribe because you have refused to bribe you must leave and at such times you may be very wary but you need to draw from the residue of the stamina you have built if you're with me please say amen. amen there are times that you love god with all your heart but you are going to see medical reports that challenge you. You may almost want to say, God, is this how you reward those who serve you? And then the strength of your inner man drawn from years, not months, not weeks. There are some investments that you, you need years to build. In business, there are investments that do not yield in weeks. They don't yield in months. You will give them five, ten years. But when they yield, they are solid. Your children can eat from it. Prayer is that way. Please fight weakness. Fight weakness. The weakness that comes from our humanity is, is proof that we do not pray. Grace to pray. Grace to pray. That you can stand and pray. No matter what happens, you are solid. Strengthen in the inner man. Number four. Please let's hurry up. Are we getting blessed tonight? The fourth reason why the Bible recommends that we pray is that prayer is God's official tool for warfare and intercession. Please write it down. Prayer is a spiritual platform for warfare and intercession. 
Please take it high for me. Warfare and intercession. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 12. The full text you can write is from verse 1 to 17. But I will read from verse 1 to 5. Ah. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Let's read together. It says, now about that time. This is the persecution of the church. Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex Saturn of the church. Verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. 3. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews. Can you imagine how wicked a leader this man was? That he did something wrong, but because others were happy, he was about to do it again. It's amazing how people will derive joy in the destruction of a family, in the destruction of children, in the destruction of a destiny. The Bible says, because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. Evil can go further. He proceeded further to take Peter also. If the devil touches your finance and you keep quiet, he will go further to your health. If he touches your firstborn and you keep quiet, he will go further to touch the second child. If he touches your education and you keep quiet, he will go further to touch your wife. Satan can go further. He went further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unliving bread verse 4 and when he had apprehended him he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers can you imagine that to keep him intending after easter to bring him forth to the people the man was using another man's situation to make a name he wanted to be seen as herod the great and herod the good and so he inquired the desire of the people and it did not matter whether the desire affected Peter or affected the church. He wanted to use the church to make a name for himself in government. Verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. Hallelujah. Let's read the remaining part. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Be patient with me and let's continue. 6. Very interesting. The Bible says, when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, the same night, when you pray, God does not delay. The same night, it says, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains. And look at this kind of oppression. You are in prison, it's another tragedy. You are between soldiers, then you are bound with chains, and they are kept at the door. Did Isaiah the prophet not say there are people like that? Physically, they are moving, but spiritually, this is their condition. The only thing moving forward in their life is their age. Nothing else is moving. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Please give us the other verse. It says, verse 7 now. Be patient. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And light shined in prison. And he smote Peter by the side. And raised him up saying. Arise up quickly. And his chains. And his chains. Talk to me. And his chains fell off his hands. That means some chains remain only because God has not come. When the, the angel did not say chain fall. The very presence of God can end certain circles. Next verse please. The angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Now look at something interesting. Verse 9. And he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought it was in a vision. Keep that scripture there. Did the Bible not say when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, that it shall be like a dream? Even Peter... Peter was wondering, what kind of deliverance is this? He thought he was still in a vision. You know, there are dreams that you dream is till you wake up before you know it's a dream. 
this is how God will surprise someone in this church this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. That even when you stand to testify, you will ask people, I, I hope I'm doing the right thing. Verse 10. This is the verse I want us to see. Let's read it together. When they were past the first and the second word, they came unto the what? Stop. The Bible would have just said they came to the gate. But this very gate was made of iron. Is it in your Bible that he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder? They came to the iron gate that leaded to the city. They came to the gates that leaded to prosperity. They came to the gates that leaded to speed. But it was an iron gate that closed it. That you are out of the prison does not mean you are safe. There is still an iron gate waiting. He escaped the first gate. Please hear what I'm telling you. I'm speaking prophetically. The first gate opened. The second gate opened. But the two of the gates were only leading to the iron gate, not yet the city. When he got to the gates that lead to the city, the Bible says it opened to them on its own accord. And they went out and passed through on the street and forth with the angel departed. You are out of prison, but it doesn't mean you are safe. There are many gates. Are we together? You are out of the hospital does not mean the attack has stopped. You won the court case does not mean the demonic oppression has gone. You can pass the first gate. God is speaking to someone. The second gate, but there is a gate that is called the iron gate. And my Bible says he has broken the gates of brass. That gate is not only open, it is broken. So that your children can also pass. You see, there are gates if you pass alone. The, the trap, when the devil traps your children, your loved ones, you are still not free. There are gates that should not be open. They should be broken. Patterns that should be broken. People rise up and get to certain height and come down before everybody. And you get to a point where you say, I'm not only going to escape, I must break that gate. He has broken the iron gate. Opened on his own. And said, now you can go to the city. Warfare and intercession. James chapter 5 and verse 13. Is any man afflicted? The Bible says, let him pray. Let him pray. Is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. What is affliction? A disturbance to your peace. An affliction is a disturbance to your peace. It can come as sickness. It can come as bad news. It can come as an orchestration of darkness. Remember the Bible says our warfare is not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, powers, rulers of the dark kingdom and spiritual wickedness that resides in the heavenlies. They only use men as puppets. But the real stage for evil is in the heavenlies. Are we together? So we must pray. We must pray. The devil is stubborn. You give him room, he will wreck your life to pieces. He will start as if he's joking until he shreds your life completely. But someone in this church this night will be angry enough to say, Satan, no more. I gave you room 2015. I gave you room 2016. But this year, 2020, is a new circle. I'm determined to stay. You know one thing God tells us about Satan? He has a weakness. When Satan is resisted long enough, he flees. The Bible says it. He tempted Jesus. Temptation number one, number two, number three, he left him. You can weary Satan to leave you. Resist the devil and he will flee. Hallelujah. Warfare and intercession. Now many believers do not believe that there is a warfare dimension to the work of the saints. In as much as I understand that here and there people have exaggerated the concept of spiritual warfare and demons and manipulations and curses and all of these things. Uh, we have also made the mistake of swinging to the other side of the pendulum to just act that there is no such thing as that. I, 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 I want to submit to you that demons are real. I want to submit to you that yokes are real. 
causes are real i want to submit to you that tragedies can be programmed it was the psalmist that says thou shalt not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted in noonday these things are very real the challenge with many people is they came from families where the sacrifices of their parents immune them from seeing the full gravity if you don't see evil in your life someone's intercession is covering you while you grow but don't take it for granted because you will be exposed to a rude shock if you do not build your spiritual life there are people who have never begged for bread they don't know what delay is because the sacrifice of mother and father and uncles their parents entered covenants with god that made him to vow to bless them so when they hear things like oppression they, they've not captured that reality in their experience so sometimes they can express sarcasm but let me tell you sincerely even jesus was about to give up at gethsemane because of the the, the onslaught of hell upon him demons are real devils are real they can destroy destinies into pieces hallelujah there are spirits that operate in families they do not operate until you get to certain levels of achievement once you are poor and broke it will look like they are dead be promoted and you will see that they've been there the devil can be patient for 30 years waiting till you become a director then it will now happen like it happened to your brother someone shout no way Let me tell you my brothers and my sisters evil is real find a way of convincing yourself that a man vows to bless you and says i will give you a job and the devil seizes his memory and he no longer remembers you was it not the wine presser that forget forgot joseph how could you forget a man that was so nice to you there are demons that erode they capture the minds of people your breakthrough is in someone's table now but there is a spirit stopping it Believe what I share with you. It is true. There are people anointed by God, but these spirits will never allow their voice to go global. They will never cross certain shores. They write books. They are great people. You listen to their messages and it's amazing. But any attempts to cross beyond certain thresholds, they bring them down. There are families like that. First class, first born. First class, second born first class third born and the highest person among them earns thirty thousand a salary something is wrong the bible says and the god of peace will give you peace always by all means peace means a state of rest nothing missing nothing broken a state of completion and abraham was old and well stricken in age and god had blessed him in all things your peace is a definition of your completeness if it is not complete do not rest we only rest when we get to the seventh day when you rest on day two you are wrong it's only on the seventh day that we rest when all things are in place is god speaking to us there is a warfare dimension to every believer jesus and the apostles did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that we are not alone in the earth the bible says while men sleep there are certain people that can come and sow seeds you can go to bed in peace and wake up with all kinds of troubles waiting for you hallelujah i once had the story of a, a gentleman true story the only son an only child of his mother i think the, the gentleman just graduated and he went to collect his certificate and he was on his way to go and rejoice when a big truck just went and smashed the way he died is what made it bad not that he died he smashed and literally smashed the call the skull of that child when the mother heard you can imagine i don't even know whether the mother is alive or not you know we see these things and we say ah, a truck just made mistakes until you know how long it took the devil to plan that tragedy was it not in your bible that her man was planning to annihilate the jews and he consulted with mediums and they found december 13th to be the date that they will strike there are people who are appointed unto death a date has been fixed they are walking on earth but in the realm of the spirit they are finished 
but someone will be angry this night and say lord no way i cannot allow this happen to me i cannot allow this happen to my children i think we can stop here for this night so that we'll pray we'll continue tomorrow but we need to use the remaining 10 minutes or so that i have for us to pray seriously please rise up on your feet i'd like you to hold hands with someone just pair yourselves into two if you can two two if you can we are going to pray hallelujah please say after me everyone in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus i come by the blood of the lamb and i declare every mark upon my life upon my family for evil i wipe it now and forever lift your voice and pray everything upon my life for evil the programmings of tragedy upon my life is someone praying for evil in the name of jesus put your children in the prayer put your job in the prayer put your influence in the prayer i declare by the god of the heavens every programming upon my heavens making for tragedy lift your voice and pray every programming of darkness upon my life in the name of jesus i come against it by the power of the holy ghost i declare i prophesy i decree i prophesy on this 20th day i make decrees by the spirit you shall not prevail you shall not stand you shall not prevail hallelujah in jesus name in jesus name first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 we are still praying something is shifting in the spirit first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 let's read it together please and samuel said unto the people it is the lord that advanced moses and aaron and brought your fathers up out of the land of egypt keep that scripture there it is god that advances men samuel said it is god that advanced moses and aaron it takes more than desire to move forward peter wanted to go out of the prison but the chains held him the bible says it is the lord that means if a man moves forward oh and vetoes his background it is the lord say in the name of jesus oh god arise and move my destiny forward and move my children forward lift your voice and pray arise almighty god the advancer of men the advancer of career the advancer of health the advancer in ministry i decree by the spirit of grace i decree by the spirit of faith i decree by the power of the holy ghost it is the lord that made moses and Aaron to advance it is the Lord that makes new heritage Baptist Church to advance it is the Lord that makes every youth in this church to advance hallelujah hallelujah 
Praise the Lord. Are we still here? Exodus chapter 14, please, and verse 14. Next prayer point. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 14. This is a prophetic word for someone this year. That the Lord will fight for you. And you will hold your peace. Verse 15. And the Lord said to Moses, The Lord is saying to New Heritage Baptist Church, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. It's a command. It's a prophetic word that they go forward financially. They go forward spiritually. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward in the name of Jesus. Even in old age, the Bible says they shall be fat and flourishing. Is someone praying seriously? Is someone praying seriously? I move forward. I move forward. Academically, I move forward. Someone is praying. I move forward in my career. No more delay, no more stagnation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're almost done. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Next prayer point. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Let's read together. Anybody who believes, want to read. And I will restore unto you the years that the, can the canker worm. Please keep that scripture there. Once upon a time, the Bible says the sons of the prophet, Elisha was mentoring them. And they said, where we meet with you is too small. Let us move to the other side. And while they were felling the trees to make a greater place, the Bible says the axe head fell. And he cried and said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. That means I'm in trouble. And the prophet said, where fell it? And he threw a stick. You're going to cry. Lord, I've lost things. I've lost time. I've lost relationships. I've lost money. But in 2020, restore years. Someone is praying, restore years. Restore finances. Restore reputation. Restore integrity. Restore jobs. Please be serious. Pray, pray, pray. Restore, oh God of heaven. Oh God of New Heritage Baptist Church. Restore, 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 restore. Someone is crying. Someone is angry. Restore. Lord, I would have been a PhD holder now, but I was sick for five years. Restore. Lord, I would have had five children now, but I'm just getting married. Restore. Lord, I would have been a manager now, but I'm just getting my first job now. I finished school 15 years ago, but I'm just getting the first job. Lord, restore. I don't just want to move forward. Restore time. Restore opportunities.
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus never forget the mystery I want to show you now next prayer point second Samuel chapter 9 second Samuel chapter 9 in the name of Jesus verse 1 and David said is there any that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness there are men that can show kindness to men are we together for Jonathan's sake verse 2 and there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba and they called him unto David and the king said to him are thou Ziba and he said thy servant is he it's a long reading and the king said is there not yet any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and Ziba said unto the king uh, Jonathan had yet a son but that son is what lame incapacitated next verse 4 and the king said where is he and Ziba said unto the king behold he is in the house of Machir the house of Amiel in Lodabar 5 the king sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir and the son of Amiel of Lodeba. Verse 6. It says, Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan and of Saul, was come to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold your servant. Verse 7. It says, And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show you kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And I will what? Let me show you how God restores. God restores using men. I will restore unto thee all the land of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Verse 8. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou should look upon such a dead dog? A man is there condemning himself and yet the favor of God refuses to leave him. Verse 9. And the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Ten. Thou therefore, please look at this. He's talking to Ziba now. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servant shall till the land for him. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table the last sentence is very scary read with me now ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants and yet the king did not look at one of his sons a man has 15 sons 20 servants and yet he was sent to use the servant to serve a lame man father who must favor me this year there is always a man that god will program to lift you say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the helpers of my destiny appear now lift your voice and pray financial helpers spiritual helpers someone is praying Lagos is too blessed for you to be poor Lagos is too enlightened for you to be stranded where are they oh god i come before you like mephibosheth the son of jonathan the son of saul show me kindness show my family mercy in the name of jesus the son of the living god prophesy in the name of Jesus prophesy this is how God restores 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 he will send men I will restore the years I will restore the fortunes of Zion
Hallelujah. The last prayer point, and we're done for tonight. Genesis 19. Genesis chapter 19. Now, I'll just give us the background and then we'll rush to the verse that... Um, this is a very interesting scripture because two angels, Sodom and Gomorrah, is about to be judged. Are we together? Just, just to put things in perspective. And then the Bible says that two angels came to meet Lot for the sake of Abraham so that they rescue him out because they were about to judge the land because of the perverseness in the land. And then the Bible says that the angels brought the message and they were to leave. But Lot beckoned on them and said, please stay. Do we get the story now? And then Lot decided to accommodate the angel. But because of the depravity in the hearts of the people, when they saw the angels, they came to knock the door and they told Lot, where are those two men in? He said, bring them out so that we'll lay with them. And Lord said, no, 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 don't do this kind of abomination. These are messengers from God. Lord even went as far as saying, take my daughters, do with them as you please. But the people said, no, it is these people we want. Please go to verse 9. We're reading 9 to 11. For time's sake, Genesis 19, 9 to 11. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he will need to be a judge now. Uh, will we deal what's with me and so on and so on. And they pressed the more upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. The people were insisting that, you know, they must have their way with all these angels. Verse 10. And the men put forth their hand and put Lot into the house to them and shut the door. The angels now, the angels were angry. And then the Bible says, and the angel smote the men who were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. When you are blind, you can be close to a door and yet not know where the handle is to open it. Are we together now? The Bible says these people were already at the door. There are people who are close to their blessings, but because the eyes to see it is not there, they can be gallivanting around your promise. You can even be in the street where your blessing is, but it takes God to open your eyes to see. How many properties have you passed that were destined to be yours? But if God does not open your eyes, you will not see it. You may have passed your office many times. The last prayer point. Lord, every veil upon my eyes that stops me from seeing what you are releasing and where you are taking me. In the name of Jesus and tonight, let the veil be torn. Let the blindness go. Let my eyes, the miracle of open eyes, lift your voice and pray to see the business that will bless me in the land to see the relationship that will lead that will lift me in the land lift your voice and pray please the god of this world blinds the minds of people they were at the door but the door could not open they were at the door, but they did not know how to open it. You've gone for the training, but you do not know how to convert it into a business that will bless you. Open my eyes. Some of you are new to this church. Lord, open my eyes. Is this the church you are anointing for me in this season? You have brought me here to bless me. Lord, this could be the place, and yes it is, that you want me to be part of this family because my destiny is connected here. Lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Open my eyes, open my eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. I'm done every business that someone is profiting from today someone saw it before but they did not understand it it's amazing how you can look and yet not see praise the lord 
there are people who have found themselves in areas where their empowerment their graces is not there and all that god would open their eyes to see there are people today who their honor is in ministry but they are doing something else there are people who are not in ministry but because all their friends are in ministry they decided to join whereas their destiny is in education or management we need the miracle of open eyes that a man's eyes can be open so that you don't waste your time you see circumspect you are able to see to know that lord this is what you want me to do one of the miracles of open eyes is also to know when seasons end you can use the jawbone to kill an ass but after the after i mean after the the, the philistines are dead you will not need to use the bone again so you need to know when to drop the bone and use another weapon the miracle of open eyes father we thank you for the time to pray we know that the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous avails much we have spent time to travel and in the name of jesus i pray and declare over everyone here return into a realm of strange testimonies in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus amen please let me plead that tomorrow whilst you come by the grace of god i'll still be here tomorrow please invite i want to share with you something and we'll pray invite everybody you know please don't come alone come with your family members come with i saw that there's a provision for overflows outside so there's no problem at all uh, excellent projection system here so come with your families come with your loved ones tell everybody that tomorrow is serious business we're going to take our time and pray that whatever balance that the devil you say but the bible says when you catch a thief he doesn't return what he stole he returns tenfold and so we're coming here and we're going to deal with some serious things tomorrow that the prophetic word that dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye